every one of you here today as we gather to worship in this outdoor sanctuary. We truly have learned that this is a time and a place that we can worship together and that we can be bound to one another in Christ regardless of what separates us from one another. As we gather today, I want to just say how happy I am to see you, but also to remind you that we have planned for our Easter service to be at 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday, April 4th, right here in our parking lot. We hope you will make your plans to come and to be a part of that service, uh, as that will be the next time that we gather, 11 o'clock on Easter Sunday. Also, I want to remind our children that after the service today, Mr. Terrence is going to meet with you. There's Mr. Terrence over there. He's going to meet with you and we're going to film the Palm Sunday uh, Hosanna Parade. So we want to see you with Mr. Terrence for just a few minutes after the service. We can get you walking around and doing your, your Palm Sunday Parade for us. And that will show with our Palm Sunday service on next Sunday virtually. Also want to just let you know that we will release a virtual service on April the 1st, which is Holy Thursday, and that will be released at 6 o'clock, and that will be um, our passion service for that week. And then, of course, we'll gather here on Easter Sunday morning. I'm so glad that you are here. If you feel the need to be in your car during this service, you can uh, tune in to 88.9 a.m., and you can hear the service there. So I hope that you will um, uh, stay here with us as long as you can, and we pray that the weather will hold up. Uh, Rick Frierson asked me when he passed me in the hall if I was the one that picked that hymn, Give to the Winds Thy Fears, and I told him yes I was, and he said it was all my fault. <laughs> so if you want to blame somebody, just blame me. Uh, I want to ask Lee Haynes to come now and to share uh, an announcement with you from our Staff Parish Relations Committee. Good afternoon, Washington Street. Good to see everyone. Um, yes, I'm coming here as um, part of SPR, SPPRC to give you an um, announcement. Um, as you know, uh, Reverend Parrish announced in January of her upcoming retirement in um, June. And although we're saddened by her departure, we are happy uh, for her as she transitions to that time where she and Gary can renew and enjoy family and new adventures. Pastor transitions and the itinerant model is a long-held part of the Methodist denomination. The bishop and the cabinet meet each March to fill ministerial vacancies and to set new appointments. I'm happy to announce that Reverend Becky Shirley will be our new pastor beginning in July. Reverend Shirley is a native of the Columbia area. Um, she's currently serving at Philadelphia UMC up in Fort Mill, um, but she graduated from Columbia College, University of South Carolina, and of the Lutheran Theological Seminary here in Columbia. In the past, she has served at um, Trenum Road UMC, at Platt Springs Road UMC, and other congregations around South Carolina. Uh, Reverend Shirley is married to Mr. Richard Shirley, and they have one daughter who is a high school teacher here in the Midlands. The SPRC and the Church Council will be working on transition plans over the next few months. Um, we'll be keeping the congregation informed and of upcoming opportunities both to wish Reverend Parrish well and the best and welcome Reverend Shirley to our family here at Washington Street. Thank y'all very much. Thank you, Lee. I want to also remind you that um, we have Lenten devotion books on our registration table and our registration table is just to my left and it's there so we'll have a record of your attendance. Also there you'll find these palm crosses that are there for you to take home with you. <clears throat> this will give you something to mark your altar at home uh, in celebration of Palm Sunday. I invite you now to stand as we sing together our opening hymn.
may be seated. And if you would join me in the opening prayer found, fit, found printed in your worship guide. Let us pray. O oh God, in mystery and silence, you are present in our lives, bringing new life out of destruction, hope out of despair, growth out of difficulty. We thank you that you do not leave us alone, but labor to make us whole. Help us to perceive your unseen hand in the enfolding of our lives and to attend to the gentle guidance of your spirit that we may know the joy you give your people. Amen. Please stand as you are able as we affirm our faith with the words of the Statement of Faith of the United Church of Canada printed in your worship guide. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen.
You may be seated. So this morning, I want to uh, invite you to share in the reading of the scripture lesson with me. It's going to be sort of, we're going to line the psalm. This is something that has happened all through the generations, quite often in those times when people were not literate in the church. So I'm going to say a line, and then I want you to say it right after me. And if we stumble over the words, it'll all be okay. The most important thing is that we hear the words and read the words together. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and wept. When we remembered Zion, when we remembered Zion, there on the poplars, there on the poplars, we hung our harps, we hung our harps. For there our captors asked us for songs for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. They said, it's one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the songs of the Lord? How can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? while in a foreign land. If I forget you, Jerusalem, if I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. May my right hand forget its skill. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. May my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy, my highest joy. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did. Remember, Lord, what the Edomites did on the day Jerusalem fell, on the day Jerusalem fell. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down, they cried. Tear it down to its foundations. Tear it down to its foundations. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction. Daughter Babylon, doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you. Happy is the one who repays you. According to what you have done to us. According to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks and dashes them against the rocks. I bet you never said that in church before. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you read it in the Psalter, or maybe not. I know that when I have used this Psalm in the Psalter myself, I've taken out those last two verses and printed it in the bulletin so nobody would read them. Although this psalm does appear in the Revised Common Lectionary, my two preferred online homiletical resource commentaries have nothing written about this psalm. Nada. Nothing. It's raw. It's ugly. It's painful. It's full of anger. And from the lips of holy people comes a cry to do harm to infants. We don't like to read psalms like this one because they are brutally honest. As we studied this psalm in our Roll Down Justice Linton study, we began to write our own laments. I felt like every one of us could write a lament about this time of pandemic. And then I began to wonder if we have been as brutally honest about how we have felt in this last year as our psalmist was in capturing the raw emotions of those Hebrews in exile. The psalmist was willing to speak about yielding to the complete despair of weeping, of silence, 
of putting away her instruments of praise and hanging her harp in a tree like wet laundry. How about you? Have you been brutally honest with anyone about how you have felt during this pandemic? I think that most of us have felt a strong need to be strong and, I don't know, is the word adaptive for one another? We just didn't want to have to admit out loud, sometimes even to the people we were closest to, how we were feeling. I know that there have been times when people would say, so how are you doing? And I would answer, uh, okay, when I wasn't really okay at all. When what I should have been able to say was, I'm really weary. I'm just bone weary of this. Or as I finally began to speak aloud, I'm okay. And then there's Sunday. Sunday is just hard for me. Now having outdoor services has made it a whole lot better. But Sundays without being in person in worship, I can tell you, is tough. I can tell you all of the things I miss about being with you and worship in our most sacred spaces. But that's not really the point. The point is that most of us, if we confess and are brutally honest, have not expressed to many people how we have really felt over this last year. I called a friend one afternoon to ask her how I should make a donation in her honor to a foundation that she supported. After talking to her for a few minutes and hearing, oh yeah, we're doing fine, we're doing fine, she turned away from the phone. No. I said for you to sit in your place and do your homework. Then another voice was heard to which she responded, absolutely not. All of you go sit down now and do your homework. Then she explained that she was managing virtual education for two of her grandchildren and one of her step-grandchildren. And for about the next 30 minutes, I heard the raw reality of her day-to-day -day life in COVID and the ragged frustration that dogged her every minute. The truth is that we, we've been hiding a lot of what we felt and what we've experienced. I cannot imagine what some of you have endured emotionally as you were separated from loved ones in residential care facilities or have gone months without seeing your children or your grandchildren, if you've seen them at all since last March. Children, youth, and parents have had to make huge functional life adjustments just to get through a school year and then they had to start all over again. We've all had to learn new technology, new skills to connect with folks, or else we've had to figure out how to connect with them at all. Last summer, I was in route to visit a friend who'd had a heart attack. And I stopped by to see my mother's oldest and dearest friend told me then, she said, well, you know, at my church, we feel like they've just forgotten us old folks. She said, they're doing everything online. But we don't hear anything from the church. Just every now and then we get a phone call. We just feel like we've been forgotten. And I thought of all the times that, that Austin has been here on Wednesday to print the connection and to print our sermons and to get the newsletter out to make sure that all of our older adults who aren't technologically friendly have gotten that information in the mail, have stayed connected with our church. And I gave thanks for that because I realized that we could lose connection with so many people 
during this pandemic. We've had to learn a lot of new things and do a lot of things differently. We've had to worship outside. We've had to worship virtually. We've had to bury family members and friends, sometimes without the benefit of a service that we really wanted them to have. Others have had to grieve in isolation because they were sick or someone in their family had COVID and they were unable to share their grief with anyone outside of the staff of the hospital or outside those caregivers who were coming to their aid. In the last weeks, we have marked the end of one year of living with the reality of COVID. If we are brutally honest, as the psalmist was, we will admit that there have been moments of absolute, utter despair. We have grieved for what we have lost and who we have lost. We've experienced a kind of fear that is unprecedented for most of us. We've had to live with a fluid calendar that is something like, well, depending on the numbers, we'll do this. And we've had to put off things we've dreamed of and yearned for. In fact, we really can't plan for the future either, can we? Because even now, we don't know where COVID-19 is. Will there be a resurgent after spring break? Will the variants cause another surge in the numbers? For our family, we're kind of wondering already. When Rebecca goes to the hospital and has our new grandson, will we get to see him until she brings him home from the hospital? Maybe not. Probably not. I cannot imagine how frustrated and crazed small business owners must have been all through this last year as they watched their profit margin shrink as they've had to grapple with questions like, how long can I keep my business open? Or is it time to sell? It's been a tough year. This Psalm teaches us that we can speak our honest truth, that we can speak the depth of our human suffering. We can even name our unbridled anger and our desire for revenge in the church, here, in God's company, we can be fully human. Last week, Bishop Will Willman presented a workshop to the Columbia District clergy on Easter preaching. He talked to us for a few minutes about the work of the preacher. And he talked about how the work of the preacher is to approach the text every week and to discover something new there. And then to go back to the congregation and to proclaim that new discovery to the people of God. Then he played for us an Easter sermon that he preached back in 2019, the last time that most congregations gathered for in-person worship. He asked us to be listening for what he had discovered as he proclaimed his message that day. What I heard was that he discovered that Easter happens when Christ appears to people who had given up hope. Easter happens when Christ appears to people who had given up hope. Think about it. The disciples were in hiding because when Jesus was handed over, they were convinced that it was all done. But all of those years were for nothing. The women were weeping and mourning because when Jesus died, they thought that he was gone forever. His mother was with John because her son had given her away as he died on the cross. She thought that the son who had been announced and welcomed by angels, greeted by shepherds and people from all around the world, was dead and buried. 
Their despair was so great that they had lost hope. Just like our psalmist in exile. Then Jesus appeared to them. Outside the tomb, on the road to Emmaus, beside the Sea of Galilee. He did not appear to the powerful. He did not appear at the gates of the temple. He appeared to those who followed him, whose lives were broken by despair and fear, those people who had lost all hope. He came to them and he said things as unlikely as, do not be afraid and peace be with you. Easter happens when Christ appears to people who have given up hope. Today, as we mark the end of one year of living with COVID-19, I invite you to remember. I don't want you to don rose-colored glasses and pretend that this has been anything but a harsh year. It has been brutal. I do want you to look around, to search the faces of your neighbors and your loved ones, to remember the phone calls, the emails, the cards, the Zoom visits and meetings, the virtual everything. I hope that you'll go back and think about all those wonderful news clips where you saw people being neighbors to one another. Standing in line to deliver food to food banks. People raising money to care for others and to provide for people who had nothing left. Did you see Jesus there? I believe that he has come to us throughout this time, especially in those moments when we were without hope, to bring us glimpses of Easter joy. Perhaps it was in the voice of a friend who called at just the right moment and said, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I know how hard this is for you. Or maybe there was somebody who sent you a card that you hadn't heard from in years that just said, I've been thinking about you. Hope you're having a good day. Perhaps you glimpsed Jesus in our times of gathering for worship or in our joyful children's moments or, or in our devotions and, or in our music. This psalm, like Easter, reminds us that we can be fully human because God is fully God. And God will not be turned back by our raw, broken humanity. This psalm, like Easter, reminds us that God will come to us in our most helpless moments to deliver us from our pain and our suffering, to comfort our mourning hearts, and to rebuild our broken worlds. Christ will come to us to be our hope because he is our resurrection and our life. The word of the Lord for us today is do not be afraid. Peace be with you. In the name of our loving and life-giving God, amen and amen.
may be seated. Let us pray together. Holy God, we gather as a people who know the depths of despair, but know that in your love, we experience the joy of abundant life, a life that gives meaning and purpose and focus to all that we do. You, O oh God, give us songs to sing. You turn our mourning into dancing. You lift us up. You give us hope. And we come as people with thankful hearts that even in the midst of this crazy and unusual time, you have been here for us, giving us glimpses of your life-giving love. We pray, O oh Lord, for all who this day continue a season of mourning. For all, O oh Lord, who are seeking new ways to employ themselves and serve their family. We pray for our children, for our teachers, and for those who continue to be on the front lines of health care. And we pray, Lord, for those who are sick, for those who are suffering, both in our country and around the world. We pray especially for those who are without access to vaccines, as we are, and we pray, O oh Lord, for the continued use of the gifts of science and knowledge to help us end the ravages of this pandemic. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless our hearts with an awareness of your divine presence that is so uplifting that we can see and be the Christ to one another. And may we, O oh Lord, continue to be your people, trusting in your love, trusting in your grace, being ambassadors of your peace throughout all the world. These things we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses 